Hello and welcome to a dev named Josh. I'm a dev named Josh and today we're going to be talking about GD script. We're going to teach the bare fundamentals and we're going to talk about variables, data types, functions, and just the general syntax of GD script. All right, we're going to close down our project that we had running from before and we're going to create a new script by going into the player character scene and by clicking on this little icon up here, we can attach a new or existing script to the selected node, okay? Same thing if you want to right click, you can also attach a script. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to attach a script and we're going to see that we have a couple of options here. The first one is language. Now we're going to stick with GD script, um, but you can also use a visual script, which is similar to like Unreal Blueprints. It's visual scripting language, right? Um, like I said, we're going to stick with GD script, but if you're using the mono version, like I like to use uh, in 3.4 because mono version uh, does not exist for 4.0 yet. Um, then you'll also see, uh, you'll also see C sharp here. <laughs> Don't know why that was so hard for me to say, but we're gonna choose GD script. We're gonna see that it inherits from character body 2D. The reason for this is because our player character node that we're attaching the script to, although we've renamed it player character, the node type is still character body 2D. If you remember, we created a character body 2D and we just gave it a different name. This is awesome. This means that this script is gonna be able to use all the properties and methods found on the character body 2D, which is great. Uh, class name, we don't have one yet. Um, by default, you may see this uh, if you're dealing with alpha 12. Um, the template will automatically be checked and it gives you like character body 2D basic movement, which is cool. That's actually like platformer uh, movement has gravity and all that. I don't want to use that mostly because I'm trying to show off GD script. I don't need to see uh, pre-typed things here in this tutorial, but also because our movement is going to be different for our twin stick shooter. I'm just going to check off. I don't want a template. Um, and what this is going to do is this is going to give us a blank file with just uh, extends character body 2D at the top, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, built in script, never use it. Don't actually know what that does. I should look that up. But there's also this path. And the path allows you to decide where you're going to put your script and what you're going to name it. So right now, we're just going to put it down here under the resource uh, folder with everything else. And we're going to call it playercharacter.gd. Now, if you did not rename your character body 2D node to playercharacter.gd, you will notice that by default, it's going to load and say you want to make this type of script, a character body 2D.gd. You're going to notice a warning. Having the script name be the same as a built-in type is usually not desired. If you name your scripts the same as a built-in type in Godot, you're going to get confused, especially with larger projects. Don't do it. Uh, this is part of the reason we renamed our player uh, to player character. Right. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep it as... Uh, player character.gd and we are going to create a script and immediately there's a couple of things that happen first of all we enter the script view which gives us this nice text editor that's built in to Godot this text editor is wonderful for working with GD script I have no complaints I think it's fabulous it's wonderful it's great um, when you're using things like the mono version though you're gonna want to opt for an external editor such as like VS code or Visual Studio Community Edition or Rider, which is what I use. Um, this doesn't perform as well when dealing with like the mono version. Uh, you can still use it, but it's gonna cause you a little bit of pain. But for GD script, this editor is wonderful. Now, there are a few things we can change in the editor, uh, in the actual text editor itself. If we go over to editor and we click editor settings, over here on the left, we can scroll down to text editor and I'm gonna go to completion, okay? Now you're going to notice I have these little revert symbols here because I have changed all of this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert idle parse delay to two. I'm going to revert my code completion delay to 0.3 and I'm going to revert my add type hints. This is how yours will be set up. If you're, if you're kind of uh, opening the engine for the first time and haven't messed with anything, this is how it will be. Um, we are going to add type hints later because I'm going to probably in the next video teach statically typed GD script. And this is just very helpful. The code completion delay 
Uh, you can leave it at 0.3. It just means that it's going to be a 0.3 second delay before any like code completion uh, hints pop up. I typically change that to like 0.1. I don't mind the code completion stuff appearing. Uh, if you have a problem with it or you want to be a purist, like, you know, just set it higher. The auto parse delay, honestly, I typically bring it down, but I'll leave it at two for now. So with those settings, uh, kind of like that, we're going to come into here and we're going to talk about GD script now. Um, and what I want to talk about first is variables. So variables are a way to store data. Uh, what do I mean by that? So let's say you have your name that you want to display in game, or you have a, your player is allowed to enter a character name. So we're going to make a variable. Uh, and the way you declare a variable is with the var keyword. And then you're going to name the variable itself, character name. All right. So now we have this variable called character name. And now we can put data inside of this character name variable. You can think of variables kind of like boxes that you put things in. And the way we put data inside of it is we use an equal sign and then we put the actual value, okay? And in my case, I wanna put Josh. It's gonna be my character name. Now I can't just type Josh. We're gonna get an error and it says identifier Josh not declared in current scope. Side tangent, errors are your friends. They're going to help you. And when we get into the statically typed uh, video, you're gonna find that like errors are really gonna save you from yourself, okay? Do not be scared of errors. Do not give up because you see some red pop up on the screen. Read it, understand it, and if worse comes to worse, copy the error message, put it into Google, and see what other people are dealing with when it comes to that error. I promise you will find the answer. In our case, the reason that we're getting this error is because it's trying to understand what, what a Josh is. Is Josh a built-in type like uh, character body 2D? Is it a keyword? Is it another variable like character name over here? What is Josh? It doesn't know because it doesn't automatically assume that this is a word or what we call a string. The way we say, hey, this is a word that I want to store in a variable. This is a string. It's a string of characters I want to store as a value is we wrap it in double quotes. Now, I believe in GD script, you can actually do single quotes that might be, you might have to adjust the editor setting though. Uh, no, single quotes work just fine. So you can do that. So uh, I will stick, whoops. I will stick with double quotes because uh, it's pretty standard. So now we have a character name that's equal to Josh, okay? This is awesome. We are now storing the Josh value inside of character name variable, wonderful. Now, what if I didn't want to store a string of characters or a word? I can store an integer, uh, a whole number, by saying my whole number, right? We can assign it and we can say any whole number, like five, for example. Uh, let's say I want to do a floating point value, uh, which has like a decimal place. My floating point value. And you're going to notice that all my variable names, I'm using snake case with and all, all snake case is, is all the words are lowercase and we separate words by underscores. This is how you uh, do variable names and function names in Godot, okay? Um, okay, so floating point value. I'm gonna set it equal to 2.5. Now I've got all these data types, which is awesome. I can also do a vector. So I'll do my vector. What is a vector? A vector is a value that represents an X and a Y. Uh, it's a pair of values represented by X and Y. What do I mean by that? So if I make a comment real quick, um, it's gonna get rid of this equal sign so it'll stop erroring. I'm gonna make a comment. And you make a comment with a pound sign, also known as a hashtag if you're into social media. A comment will be ignored by the editor. A, anything that comes after a pound sign will not be considered code. Okay, so I can type my new variable. You'll see I'm not getting syntax highlighting or anything because this is not code anymore. This comment is for me uh, and it will be ignored by the editor. So uh, a vector, I'm gonna use a comment to demonstrate this. A vector is simply a pair of values. If you've ever worked with like a 2D graph before, you'll know what I'm talking about. A vector is an X and a Y value and you can store uh, numbers and values inside of it. So for this X and Y, I can say that 
Instead, x has a value of 2 and y has a value of 3. Okay? That's how vectors work. They're just a pair of values. Now, this is a vector 2, to be specific. If I did a vector 3, I would get an x, y, and a z, because now there are three values, and I can set the z to, like, 0. Right? That's how they work. So, for a vector 2, which is what I want this to be, I'm simply going to say, hey, my vector is equal to, um, I believe it is, I believe in GDScript it's just vector 2, and then you can do these funny parentheses that we'll talk about, and then we can give it a value. I'm gonna give it a value of one, two. Now, um, this is giving us this vector. What, is, what are these parentheses? Well, this is a constructor, um, and all that means is like, we're making a new vector two, but a vector two is not a like primitive type like here. Instead, it is, uh, it's an object, and we need to make we need to kind of make a new version of this object. And so we have these parentheses uh, and we're passing in the values that it needs. So we're creating a vector two by passing in the values one and two, which is essentially going to give us the output of one on the X and two on the Y. All right, so that is how that works. Okay, so variables, they hold data. Um, so let's talk about how to use these variables now. I'll get rid of this comment. In order to use them, we need to use something called a function. Now, in GDScript, we can declare a function by typing func, and then my function, we give it a name just like a variable, and then we add those parentheses in. Um, and these parentheses, if we want to, can hold uh, values as arguments, which we can pass into this function, similar to how we're passing in 1 and 2 to vector 2 up here and then we can use them to inform like our operations. So a function is just, we do something. And honestly, it's appropriate to call, um, to name a function a verb of some sort or a phrase that describes what it does. Uh, so my function, not a good function name, okay? But the way we declare a function is like so with a colon at the end. The colon is going to tell GDScript, okay, I've made my function and now anything after this needs to be part of the function, kind of. Not really though. So if I were to move my variable from here um, and put it like down here, we're gonna see a problem. We're gonna get an error. What's happening? Expected indented block after function declaration. Because in GDScript, instead of using curly braces like we do in C Sharp, we use this colon and then we use white space. We tab in, we use indention. So if I hit enter, you'll notice that it gave us this nice tab over. And now if I were to put my vector indented, now my vector, this is now a local variable. It's no longer global and at the top of the script, but it's local to the function, uh, is inside of the function. And now it's part of it. Meaning I don't have access to my vector anywhere else outside of this function, okay? Uh, I can't do an operation like, uh, if I come down here, indent backwards, and do a print statement, I can't use my vector because unexpected identifier in class body, like we don't know what my vector is. It doesn't belong out here. It only exists indented inside of this function, which is helpful. Um, there's some things that we're going to want to do instead of a function that we don't want everything else in the script to know about. So that's how that works. Okay. Uh, so my function is a bad name, but we want to print, let's say we want to print our name, um, to the console in Godot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a built-in function. Um, Godot comes with some built-in functions. Uh, really for things that inherit from like object or node, which obviously everything over here is a node, and specifically everything over here is a, t is a node 2D, um, that then extends, similar to how we're extending character body, uh, character body just extends from node 2D. Now, I don't know if it extends directly, but if I hold control and click on it, we can see. It also shows us what it inherits from. So we can see that character body 2D inherits from physics body, and physics body 2D inherits from collision object 2D, 
inherits from node 2D, like I was saying earlier. It inherits from canvas item, from node, and from object. And this is the inheritance chain, okay? All of this functionality, all the functionality of object is given to node, which declares functionality on top of it and extends it, which gives it to canvas item, which extends node and object. And then we go all the way down and now in character by 2D, we have all of, um, all of these things. So all that to say, because it inherits from object and node and node 2D, we have access to Godot's built-in functions. Namely, I want to do the ready function. As we can see, I get a little bit of uh, auto-completion here. Uh, I type in func underscore ready. Now, Godot typically, if I click on that, it will go ahead and make it for me. Uh, Godot typically, th their built-in functions uh, start with an underscore. And that's how you'll differentiate. When I create functions, I don't start mine with an underscore so that I know what is a built-in Godot function versus what is what is my function, right? But So we have this built-in ready function. And now that we've declared it, we can print our name to the console, right? So we're going to say print, which is another built-in function by Godot. And then here, print will take an argument. Now we can pass it several things. Um, we can pass it character name, which is our variable. And you might, have, you might be able to guess this, but character name, when we say, hey, print the value of character name, it's going to print Josh to the console. Let's go ahead and press play. And you can see Josh down here. Pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and print my whole number to the console. And we see five. And that's just how it works. So <clears throat> I want to wrap this up. I don't want to go too long. So in this introduction, we've talked about variables and declaring them. Um, and as a side note, you don't actually have to declare a variable here. You can say uh, or assign the variable value there. You can say, hey, I have a variable. And then you can say, um, do, 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 in the function that I want character name to equal Josh. And we're going to have the same effect here because now when the ready function is called, when the script is activated, it's going to set character name, which at the beginning is empty, is a null value. But here when ready is called, it's going to assign it to, it's going to assign it the value of Josh. And then we're going to print Josh to the screen. Exactly the same as before. Now, I will say this. Doing this means that we have set character name, which is a global variable up here, to Josh. Meaning that if I were to call character name in another function and not assign it, it would still be Josh, right? Because we are assigning the value up here. And although we are assigning it inside of the local scope of this function, because the variable itself is global, we're passing Josh back to the global variable. So even when the function ends, this isn't removed uh, from, from memory. All right. So that's how you assign it. That's how you uh, make variables. That's how you assign them. Um, I kind of went over some data types here, including strings, number, or strings, integers, floats, vectors. Uh, and I showed you functions, how we declare them, the kind of syntax there, and how to use them. In this case, print ha takes one, takes an argument. In the next video, we're going to show kind of the pitfalls of, of using kind of GDScript in its raw form, if you will. We're going to talk about uh, statically typing this so we get a little bit more type safety and we know what we're doing um, when we're programming. We're kind of going to save ourselves from ourselves. All right, this has been a dev named Josh. I'll see you next time.